Alrighty, welcome to the video tutorial for the exercises in Code HS beginner level for lessons 2.6 and 2.7. Lesson 2.6 is copyright. We're going to jump in. Um, again, I can't stress enough the importance of what you need to do is to watch the video, look through the examples. Uh, there's a connection activity here as well that's a good hands-on activity to learn a little bit more about uh, Creative Commons licensing. So you are expected to complete that with the free responses. And again, what I'm going to show you is more the technical skill and drill with the exercise. So I'm going to jump into the exercise, make a collage, and we're going to preview. All right. Um, so what they want us to do, they have everything set up for us. So we have a web page set up. It's got a title. Um, they even format an image. Uh, tag to all be a height of 200 the width is going to vary um, so this could cause a mess later we may go if i can change uh, the height as well but overall we've got a pattern where we're going to get six different images for each image we're going to give an image address and then we're going to put the source information um, again if you watch the video and or read up a little bit more about copywriting images um, you're going to have to put all of the information that's available. So for example, here where it says source, um, the artist's name, title of image you're created, and then site you found it on, and then a URL to the image. Um, that is just kind of an example format. So sometimes the artist's name is not available. Sometimes the title of the image is not available. Um, sometimes you're creative. So if it's not available, you just move on. So for example, um, I'm, it's getting close to Halloween. So I'm going to look for some Halloween pictures. I'm use a couple of different uh, sources. So I'm going to use Google mostly because that's what most of you guys will use. So I'm going to go to Google and I'm just going to search for Halloween images. And then I want to go to the tools. Uh, make sure I did images. Okay, I did image search. That's my bad. Now I want to go to tools. And then under usage rights, I'm going to do Creative Commons license. And that way I know it's okay to use. All right, so I'm going to click on this first image of this witch on a pumpkin here. All right, so the creator is raw pixel, is located on raw pixel. It's like it's kind of a stock image from that particular website but there is no year so the way i would source this and i'm going to actually so, uh, copy the image first so again i would copy image address i'm going to paste that in and then for my citation i'm actually going to copy this example all right and plug in I'm going to tab that over so that it is aligned. All right, and just kind of plug it in. So the artist name is Raw Pixel. Okay, so that is the company, but that's also what is there. Um, so I could visit the site. I'm going to open in a new tab. And this takes me to the website where it's located, which is also going to be interested. So I can click and get a little bit more info. But again, the image itself has no title. It's just a description. It is public domain. So what I have here is pretty much all the information available. So raw pixel all right, is going to be the artist name. Right, so nothing else is there. The site I found it on, now even though I found it through Google, I'm going to actually use um, rawpixel.com. And then a URL to the image. I'm going to do an a URL that actually comes right here to this file. It's a little bit shorter, so I'm going to copy that. So if somebody were to click it, it wouldn't take them to a Google search. It would take home to the page where it exists, and then I'm going to put the URL. Now, if I wanted to be nice, I could go in and make that an active link, but I'm not going to be nice. 
So we put in there we have our first image and the source information. Okay. So um, that is pretty much, um, I do need a period right there. So I forgot that. And that spacing was just to help me a little bit. Um, so, all right, that one didn't have a lot of information, but that is the way you would source it with the information available. All right, let's come over to, uh, like, uh, this one looks interesting. All right. All right, so here, all right, there's actually a creative name of websites. So this one's going to be a little bit different. Again, we don't necessarily see the year, but I'm going to open a new tab, a link to that image. I'm going to copy the image address. I'm going to control V, paste it in. All right, and then I am going back to my assignment. And again, I'm going to copy the template for sourcing. So in this case, the artist name is given to me. All right, so this is the creator. We're gonna paste that in, that's the creator. The title of the image. Um, so this one, in this case, it actually has a title if I go to the page also now this is where it gets interesting okay because on the photo there's a watermark and it has 2014 Dan Bukowski so um, this leads me to believe that there may be some fishy business going on but it is still Creative Commons we're gonna trust that it was first published um, and it was uploaded by somebody else, but it does say it's able to use. So, but I do see that 2014. Um, so that gives me a year. And it was first published on Flickr, but that's not where we got it. So, again, artist name, title of image, your created site I found it on. So I'm going to base it on where I found it. But I did find the title is Jack O. Lanterns. So we're going to copy that because I don't feel like typing it. The title of the image that you created we found was 2014. The site we found it on, again, we're going to do that direct link to worldhistory.org because that is, again, where we found it. So... We just type world history.org and then we copy the URL and we would paste that in. And again, to go to the output, there we see the image. Again, we've got our source, where it's from, and a link. Okay. Um, for time's sake, I'm going to do one more, but you should get the gist of it. So um, let's just say we want to use a different source. So let's say we want to use publicdomainpictures.net, uh, which is one of the examples in the video. So let's just use that and just so you see something other than Google. But again, with Google, it's going to be all over the place with what you can find. And of course, Oconee County Schools blocked that one for me. Um, so we will just continue to use Google um, or Pixabay, I think. Let's see if that one... Free to use. Let's see if this is blocked. Oh, of course we blocked it. All right, awesome. Uh, gay education. Um, so uh, I guess we will have to use Google. So let's continue on. All right, and again, let's just do Halloween in general. Images. Maybe we get some different. Okay, here we go. And then I'm going to go to Tools, Usage Rights, Creative Commons. Okay. So we've seen some already. So um, all right, this Happy Halloween looks fun.
And that one's going to be big because it probably won't turn out great. Um, let's try to find one that's going to... Okay, here we go. Here's one with somebody's name on it at least. Um, so we'll open a new tab. And again, we can copy image address from this spot. Plug it in for the third image's source. And then we're going to copy the template for our citation. Okay. So then there we can actually see some more information if we follow along. So sometimes you have to dig a little deeper. So H underscore Elise is the creator. So we will credit that. The title of the image is Halloween tree. And we also have the uploaded 2008 taken 2008 so we can safely assume 2008 is the year it was created and again the site we found it on um, we can just since we have a direct link from Flickr we'll just do flickr.com and I can't spell Flickr let me yeah there's a K in there okay and then a URL, so I'm going to do a URL to this page. So this is different than the image address. There we go. Okay, and then we're going to check the output. And I forgot to do some... Oh, I didn't reload. Okay, there we go. And now we have this one again, the source is there. So hopefully three different examples. Again, each one maybe has a little bit of different information. The way it's laid out might be slightly different, but overall in the widescreen, you see it's really just one line where the source is for each image. Um, so that is it. Just continue on. You would need to do three more, but hopefully you see the process now. And also again, some, some images are not going to have a name for a creator. It may be a company or it may be a website. Uh, some may not have a year, but I do encourage you to follow the link from Google if you're using Google to the page where the image is. And especially if you're doing the Creative Commons search like you should be, sometimes you dig a little deeper, you can find additional information such as the year. Alrighty, so with that, um, I'm going to go ahead and finish up. That is lesson six. So we're then going to jump into the next lesson, which would be HTML lists. Um, and again, I'm going to jump to the first exercise, just class planning with lists. So do take a moment if you are just starting list, if you finished up the 2.6, which was copyright. Um, watch the video, take the quiz, look at some of the examples if, uh, that applies. But now I'm going to walk through the exercise. All right, I'm going to go through a little bit more quickly because I covered lists uh, pretty extensively in Unit 2. So this should be a reminder. So we're going to get started. And look at the assignment. It says use the unordered list tag, which is a UL, to create a web page listing, at least five classes that you want to take before you graduate. All right, it says try making nested lists under each item, um, adding more details. Uh, we're for time's sake, we're going to move on. So put your list here. So we're going to go ahead and set up the skeleton of this, and then we can just plug in from there. So I'm going to do a UL, and it gives me the closing tag. I'm going to press Enter. All right, remember the UL says, hey, I'm about to make an unordered list, and then we want five classes. So each class is going to need a list item tag, which is LI. And once I have that, I'm going to copy, and I'm going to paste it four more times. All right, so I'm just going to list classes that I have taught in the past. So I'm going to do pre-calculus. All right, intro to technology. All 
financial literacy, AP computer science principles, and one of my favorites, I haven't taught it in a while, but I do love teaching accounting. So the official course name is principles of accounting. Okay, and that should, when we refresh, gets us our list. Okay, submit, continue, we're good to go. Okay, so I will pause, but that's it, UL, and then each item in the list has an LI, short, sweet, to the point. All right, let's submit and continue. All right, next. All right, create an ordered list. So it's going to be containing at least five places you'd like to visit. Look familiar. Um, we did an activity earlier where we had three places we'd like to visit back in Unit 2. So here we go. So, again, we have dream vacations under that an ordered list is going to be an ol and then i'm going to have again five list items it is so much easier to set up your skeleton as i call it first and then just plug in your content so now all I have to worry about is plugging in the list of the places i want to go um an ordered list is going to be numbered automatically so i don't have to type numbers so places I would like to visit at some point, I would love to go to Iceland to see the Northern Lights. I would love to go to Italy. I would like to go to Greece. I would like to go to Egypt. And I would like to go to Peru. And I have my five places. Output, refresh, and there we go. Okay, now for the bonus where it does ask you to put nest lists, um, I would have to do another list within that list. Um, that can get a little bit tricky uh, for the sake of moving on. If you're on the beginner level, we'll just kind of move on. If you would like to know how to do that, please ask. I'll be glad to come show you individually on that one. All right, so we submit and continue. Alrighty. All right, this last exercise, modify your dream destinations list from the previous activity to create a travel guide for yourself. Your list will include the name of the country you want to travel to, a link to the travel guide, when you want to travel, how long you want to spend there. All right, so each country on the list should be numbered and formatted using H2 tags. All right, each country should have a nested. Okay, here we go. So create your list here. So I'm going to do a new, unless it tells me to do that. Okay, I'm going to do H1. This is I want to visit. All right, and then I'm going to have my main list it's going to be an ol in that i'm going to have li's and within those li's and so as i press enter again i'm going to have an h2 all right now i'm again setting up the skeleton so each country in the list should be numbered and formatted using h2 so that's going to be my country so i'm just going to type country right here each country should have a nested unordered list so under that country i'm then going to do a ul and three bullet points contain information the following all right so i'm going to have an li and that's going to be the link and LI that's going to be the month you want to visit a country so time of year perhaps and LI duration so the amount of time I want to stay all right and this says you should have at least five items in the list so that would be the countries again all right, so the list should have a large title explaining. So, for example, here you go, God to Ireland, God to Spain. So you see the example, okay? Um, so I'm going to use that skeleton that I just created. 
with the list items. All right, so that's my first list item, my first country. I'm going to need five of those, so I'm going to copy that. I'm going to do Control C. I'm going to skip a line just for spacing and paste. That's the second, third, fourth, fifth. Okay, so I just copied and then pasted it four times. And now I'm going to plug back in, and I forget the order, but again, I'll just say Egypt, Iceland, Italy, Peru, Egypt, Iceland, Italy, Peru, and what was my fifth country? Um, maybe Greece, okay. And then now I just go in and plug in the information. So I'm going to open up a new tab, World Travel Guide. And then I'm just going to search for, there's Country Guide, so let me click that first. Where we'd like to go. And let me type in Italy, for example. And next. And here's a link to Italy. So I'll just copy. All right, so that would be my link for Italy there. And then I would just say, God to Italy. I probably need to do the link first. So um, I would do an A tag. So less than A. Href equals quotes, quotes. I'm going to paste that URL I just copied. All right, after the quote, I'm going to close that. And notice it gave me a closing A tag. After that's in between, I'm going to type guide, guide to Italy. Okay. Um, now, notice I could probably figure out the code here now. So if I go back and my first country was Egypt. If I type Egypt and it gives me a similar URL, I'm really going to be in business. Sure enough, it's an S equal. So now I figured out the little code, so I'm not going to have to come back to that site. Good riddance. Um, so I'll go ahead and do the link one more time so you can see it. So A, href equals quote, quote, inside the quote, paste that URL. Outside of that quote, do the greater than. That automatically inserts my closing. And I'm going to say guide to Egypt. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is going to be even easier. This is half of web design's copy. I'm going to copy that link. And I'm going to do control C. I'm going to come to Iceland. And now... You'll see what I'm talking about in a minute once that I figured out the little trick with the URL. They're just doing a search equals in the URL. So I'm just going to replace that with the next item on my list. So this country is Iceland. So I'm just changing that URL to Iceland. I'm going to change that to guide to Iceland. And I saved myself a lot of time there just having to go back and forth between that site. All right. I've already done Italy. So now I'm going to paste that same link link, sorry, to Peru. I'm changing the Egypt in the URL to Peru. Guide to Peru. I'm coming down to Greece, deleting that placeholder for link, paste, update the name to Greece, guide to Greece, and the hard part is now done. Let me go to my output, refresh, there we go. I've got Egypt. I've got the guide. I've got the guide. And there we go. And the ones I've been to are already dark blue. All right. So now I just need to go in, plug a month. You can just make this up. Um, let's just say I want to go to Egypt in November. Let's say I want to stay one week. Um, let's say I want to go to Iceland. Right, let's say I want to go in the summer. I maybe want to go in June. And duration, maybe I want to spend 
three weeks. Italy. Uh, let's see, I want to go in, again, maybe this summer, maybe July. And maybe I want to stay two weeks, Peru. Since it's in a different uh, hemisphere, is that right? Hemisphere, northern, southern. Um, let's say I want to go there and do actually, let's say I want, yeah, just for from December. And let's say I want to stay there for one week. And now I'll refresh. And I've got the place I want to visit, the guide. I'm good to go. Submit continue, all green boxes. And we are done. So that concludes the tutorial for lessons 2, 6, and 2, 7. Um, next up will be 2, 8 tables, but that will be a different video. As always, please ask if you have questions.